Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Orient Area Chamber's first ever State of the Community Luncheon. Thank you all for coming. My name is Joyce Donaldson, and I'm the President and CEO here at the Orient Area Chamber. We're so honored that you have chosen to spend your afternoon with us as this beautiful Paint Creek Country Club. Although that weather might be a little cloudy, I did order chamber weather. It just didn't quite come through. But the outlook for Orion Township is super sunny, which you'll find out. So we're super excited about today. We have three sensational speakers, all long-standing community leaders. We have Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett, with Village of Lake Orion Council President Jerry Narsh. And we do have, um, in, instead of Sheriff Bouchard, we have the under sheriff here with us today who's going to give us a great outlook and all the updates from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office. So we're super excited about that. Thank you for joining us. Um, all of whom will share timely and relevant updates. The Chamber is dedicated to creating a strong environment for economic growth and stability. And in those ongoing efforts to achieve this lofty goal, we represent business to government, coordinate educational forums, host networking events. I think we're most known for the networking events, right? But we also represent business to government, host um, and advocate for business friendly legislation and promote community. But one of our core values is also to provide access to local, regional, state, and federal government leaders, which brings us to today. Here we are, we have a lot of great leaders um, in the audience, some of whom are going to share that information with you. But I do wanna take time to acknowledge all the great leaders that we have here in the room today. So when I say your name, if you could just give a quick stand up and a wave. Um, we have, first of all, our chamber board. We have the chairman of the board, Wayne Haney, from Farm Bureau Insurance. Treasurer of the board, Steve Wandry from Steve Wandry Caliber Home Loans. <laughs> Teresa Doan, Genesis Credit Union. Bill Kokanis, Galling Buick GMC and Orion Parade Group. Aaron Waitley, Orion Township Parks and Rec. And Jennifer Whitaker, DT Energy. And then you have these lovely girls greeting you at the door. We have our friendly ambassadors, Krista Andrews from Practically Perfect Vacations with Krista. Oh, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> we have Don Neely from Seniors Helping Seniors. Corey Thompson from the Red Oak Refillery. And Lisa Trudell from Flagstar Bank. Thank you all for all of your dedication to the chamber and our chamber membership. I would also like to acknowledge the dignitaries who have joined us today, and we have a lot of them here in the room. Make sure if you have a question or would like to speak with them afterwards, please feel free to go up to them and introduce yourself. It's always good to, you know, for them to see the faces of the business community in case you ever need them for anything. So first off, we have um, Michael Schmidt from the office of U.S. Senator Gary Peters. I think he's here. <laughs> We have Robert Widberg from Oakland County, the Oakland County Treasurer. We have Deborah Burgess, a DDA Chairwoman of the Board. Elena Campbell, the DDA Board Member as well. Elena. Don McClary, Village Manager. And dignitaries continued. We have so many here today. Um, Lieutenant Darren. Darren, <laughs> or Orfala. <laughs> I knew I was going to kill that one. Uh, and we have, I think, the new fire chief, Ryan Allen. Is Ryan here? Way. Hey, Ryan. Great. We also have Penny Schultz, Orion Township Clerk. Kim Urbanowski, Orion Township Treasurer. Julia Darrymple, Orion Township Trustee. Mike Flood, Orion Township Trustee. And also from the Township, we have Aaron Waitley, Parks and Rec Director, Aaron, double duty today, board member, and Dave Goodlow, building official. And I think Jenny Body is here, Communications and Engagement Specialist. So thank you all for coming and again, taking time to um, be with us this afternoon. 
We also, you know, there's so many thank yous, but we also want to really thank our generous sponsors. So we're, fo we're fortunate that they are um, supportive of all of our initiatives and efforts. We want to give a heartfelt thank you to our title sponsor, Michigan United Credit Union, our corporate sponsor, Mosheri Companies, our partner sponsors, Corwell Health, and DT Energy, and Spresser Ogden. We also have our champion sponsors, Comcast Business Services, Haney Farm Bureau, Kerry Sorensen Real Estate Team, Paint Creek Country Club, and Steve Wandry Caliber Home Loans. And again, much gratitude to our media sponsors, the Lake Orion Review. And there's copies of the paper that just came out today out back, uh, out in, at the expo table, so be sure to pick one up. We have Orion Neighborhood TV. Thank you, Joe and Ian, for everything that you do for us, and they'll be filming this today. We appreciate your help in spreading the good news, and be sure to visit those expo tables right behind me. Um, at this time, I would like to bring up our um, township supervisor, Chris Barnett. He was elected to Orion Township in 2012. He oversees a 27 plus million dollar budget and 115 employees. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Supervisor Chris Barnett. Thank you Joyce and thank you everyone for being here. This is my favorite group. Um, for lots of reasons. You're not supposed to have favorites. Does anybody have a favorite kid? Raise your hand. You guys are lying. Because I have one. I'm not saying which one. Um, listen, it's my distinct pleasure to be here. I am so humbled and honored to be able to serve the community that I love. Um, I have a dream job, and uh, mostly because of all of you. So um, three events today. I'm going to duck out right after this because I have to give a presentation on attracting and retaining talent in Harbor Springs at four today. So uh, that'll be a fun drive, but uh, Curtis Childs, under Sheriff Childs, said he would uh, stay, sit tight here while I was leaving Oakland County at a high rate of speed. Um, but this is by far my favorite group to speak with. Um, I've had the distinct privilege of serving uh, in leadership roles, uh, frankly, across this country. And um, by far, um, when I am home with my chamber friends and our local businesses, uh, this is my sweet spot. So I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a few things happening. Raise your hand if you saw the state of the township earlier this year. Okay, the rest of you are in trouble. Uh, this is exactly the same presentation. No, I'm kidding. Um, this is much shorter and abbreviated, and it's focused on things that I think would be of interest to you all. And, and the theme I have today is investment. So if you are a business owner, uh, most of you are or work in a small local business. You understand the importance of investing in your business. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about, I think, the importance of investing in our community and some key investments. And the first one was already mentioned. Um, this is a key investment we recently made. Uh, we um, did a nationwide search uh, for our fire chief vacancy. Uh, we had 41 amazing candidates and whittled that down to uh, you all met. But Mr. Ryan Allen, please stand up for us, please. So, so Ryan is an LO boy, which is remarkable because we hired him from Tuttle, Oklahoma. <laughs> Talk about full circle. He did a stint in the Carolinas in Oklahoma, but now he's back home and we couldn't be happier to have Ryan uh, leading our fire department. And there are some amazing things happening uh, with our first responders. I'm going to share some of those uh, with you as well. But if you want to really check in and see what's happening, you're welcome for putting this on the slide deck, Ryan. Um, but this Saturday, we have an open house. This is just a point of privilege for Ryan, uh, that we have an open house this Saturday at our fire station number one, which is downtown Lake Orion. Uh, we'd love to have you come out, bring your kids, they can climb on stuff, in stuff, meet the heroes of our community. So um, moving forward, though, I want to talk, like I said, just for a few minutes about some key strategies in our community. And raise your hand if your company has a mission and vision statement. I didn't do that the other way on purpose. I don't want to shame anyone. Um, I'm, I'm sort of infatuated with these right now because I think if you don't have a personal, this, this, this boils down to you, whatever nonprofit you're involved in, your business, your family, your personal goals. If you don't know where you're going, how do you know when you get there, right? Um, so this has sort of been a passion of mine for the last few years. And what you see on the screen is our mission and vision, the people that work for you. And real quick, I know they've already been recognized. Um, I'm the lucky person that gets to tell the story, but the credit 
goes to the amazing board that I get to serve with, who we have uh, three of those members here today, and our directors and staff and team, and most of you know them uh, if you have been in the township for any amount of time. So this is what we're about, and everything we do has to fit through this lens. And simply put, we exist to provide the best service in local government. Now raise your hand if you love going to Secretary of State. <laughs> One person. Patricia, you are lying. Um, no one does. And uh, when we, whenever we interview uh, new employees, I have, I have the privilege of, of sitting in on the, the second, the final interview with every employee that on boards with our, with our team. And I make them understand this and make sure they understand this because we exist to provide the best service in local government. If we aren't doing that, we aren't, we aren't hitting our mark. We're missing our mark. That's our, that's our target. And um, as mentioned, and we joke about it, Secretary of State's a painful place to go because you don't feel important, you don't feel valued, you're literally a number, and, you're, and uh, people are cranky. So we, we're trying to flip that paradigm. We really have no competition. We don't. If you choose to lo locate your home or business here, you have to come to our office to register to vote, to pay your taxes, to pull a building permit. You don't get to choose to go to another community. And unfortunately, so often in local government, we treat people like we have no competition. So what I see my key role is, is to continue to push this through every aspect of everything we do, but also the, the other major focus I have is protecting and growing your investment. Now for most of you, it's your business or your home. So that is the largest investment you have. Um, I was just talking to the Spresser Ogden team here, and they just planted their flag in, in downtown Lake Orion. That is their investment, and that's a big investment, and that was a big decision for them. So I see my job how can I help them outperform if they invested someplace else? So that's the next few slides are going to talk about some of the things we're doing to do just that. Um, and all, by the way, through the lens of what's our motto? Wow, that's uninspired, you guys. <laughs> ben Kirby, I thought you'd do better than that. Uh, what's our motto? Yes. So we want to do all these things, but we want to have the most fun. And I think we're doing that. So a few things that I'm really proud of, we're building an identity, we're building a brand. Um, some people want to know, why would we spend $300,000 on gateway signs? We did that. Actually, it was a little bit more. Um, do you like the signs? Yeah, thank you. So it'd be awkward if you said no right there. Um, but that was a key strategic investment because we think it's important for people to know when they come and leave our community. Um, and, and why is that important? Because the sense of pride we have. Tomorrow night, who's going to be at Clarkston? Ben Kirby is. It's a show. There's two of you. The biggest football game of the entire year is at Clarkston tomorrow. It's basically a state championship. Our sixth-ranked uh, Dragons are taking on those nasty wolves. But there's something about Lake Orion that sets us apart from other communities, the pride. When someone's in need, when there's, when there's people in need, we step up, and we're trying to build on that. Other investments, not quite as maybe as exciting as that, but we're putting a lot of money into roads. Now, most of this money is coming from our state and federal partners and our county partners, um, but we're also uh, rolling up our sleeves and putting our, our, our money where our mouth is. The largest thing that's happening in our community, I'm sure you've heard about this, is the $4 billion investment at General Motors. You've probably heard me share this before. That single investment doubles the value of our entire township. Every existing commercial and residential property is valued at about four billion dollars as of uh, January this earlier this year. They're doubling that by adding four million square feet and lots of high-tech equipment. That's the big deal. But the infrastructure is some of the worst in the county. So uh, we have three major road projects that are going to be happening all next year. So this is sort of like, hey, we're investing, but also you might want to take a three-month vacation because it's going to be hellacious. Uh, I'm disconnecting my phone and transferring all my calls to the clerk's office. Um, but uh, this project is a big one. It's, it's a 20, almost $30 million project. And the great news, uh, a year ago, we had less than $5 million identified. Uh, Sam Timko on, on my team, our chief of staff, uh, and I went to Lansing in DC a dozen times. And we're proud to announce this project is fully funded. So all those roads around the General Motors facility will be uh, reconstructed next year, which is exciting. Normally, people would clap for that, but that's OK. Um, the other projects that are happening, I'm going to try to cruise through these. Um, it's already started, but the Walden Road um, paving project heading west towards our neighbors in Independence, 
Uh, that project, the paving, will happen still this fall. And then the next year it'll be closed at Clintonville Road, Clintonville Road for a new roundabout construction. So that will be a little bit messy. And we continue. <laughs> uh, there will be another roundabout at Baldwin and Clarkson Road. Some of you are happy. <laughs> and as of right now, it's scheduled for a three-month closure next year. So we don't have the exact timing. We held an open house uh, last week with the Road Commission. Uh, but that's also going to be uh, put some, some stress on us. But as you know, if you, if you travel north in the evening at rush hour, uh, that is a major um, pinch point. The rest of the corridor really flows well. That's an area that we still struggle. And then last, we have a culvert replacement at Indianwood. Again, this might not be super sexy, but the culvert that feeds water from Indianwood Lake into Lake Orion uh, needs to be replaced. We're going to take it, the opportunity while that's being replaced to um, lengthen it so we can add some pedestrian amenities and hopefully eventually connect all the way to Lapeer Road uh, with a safety path. Um, but that will also be a full closure next year. So I'm telling you this because I'm excited about the investment in our community, but I also, as key business partners in our community, you can plan not only either your commutes or uh, your, um, your customer flow. Um, I've already been talking to some local businesses, and we'll have a lot of opportunity to continue that education process as we move forward. Um, continuing on further investments and other investments we're excited about in our community, um, we are a growing community. We have been uh, for the last couple decades. Um, urban sprawl is a big part of that. Um, but we have a lot of reasons that people want to be here. We have our award-winning school district, and Superintendent Ben Kirby's here, a great friend and partner. Um, but we have the other things I want to talk about in a few minutes, our parks and am recreational amenities. But these projects that you see on your screen are all projects, and if you're in the back, it might be hard to see, that have been fully approved, that are under some stage of either breaking ground or will break ground um, either this fall or in the spring. All told, we have about north of 1,000 residential units that have been approved. Now that stresses some people out. For the business folks in this room, hopefully that makes you excited to get your stuff in the welcome packet um, in, in the welcome bags that we give out daily uh, to the new residents in our community. Um, so Lavender Ridge, our uh, friends at Mosheri are over here, um, have been great partners with the township and the village and, and uh, frankly, Oakland County. Um, the Ponds of Orion is behind Meyer, uh, the new Meyer. The Pearl of Or, I'm sorry, the Pearl is, um, it's, that's not right, sorry. The Pearl is on Brown Road. Uh, Willow Creek, that's, this is an exciting one. Willow Creek is the old driving range. Uh, it's approved, you can see, to build um, over 100 residential multifamily units. However, the new owner, uh, I pitched the idea to him saying, and this was a very selfish pitch, hey, before you close the mini golf down forever, can we get some friends together and have like a one day tournament? And so then we met for a beverage the next day because he was so intrigued. And uh, he said, not only that, but what if we kept it open and maybe made a golf focused type development? So uh, that is what's approved to tear all that down and out. And I said, what if we could leave the front and maybe leave mini golf? And, and they're dreaming with us. Uh, and we're hopeful uh, it, with a potential restaurant that might be golf themed, that's more to come on that, but that could be something really cool. And then uh, Regal Terrace is another development that the most Sherry family's doing. And then Walden Reserve is a, is a um, residential development that's currently under construction. And then the big one, the biggest uh, development that our community has seen um, maybe since Keatington in the 70s is Baldwin Village. Um, and Baldwin Village is on the, the west side of Baldwin Road where the Judah roundabout, the first roundabout, the furthest south intersects Baldwin. Uh, currently you'll see it's a three-way roundabout. That fourth leg is where this uh, will be the center of this development. Again, the Mosheris are developing the residential portion. And then we have some of the best commercial developers in the country working on the commercial and retail uh, portions of that. So we're really excited. Seems like a lot of development. Our Planning Commission Chair Scott Reynolds is here, so if you have complaints, you can check in with Scott. There he is. Um, but we're doing all these things with mindful um, consideration to what's really important to our residents. You know, I believe in personal property rights. People own these properties. They are not owned by the township. Um, the good news, if you're worried about traffic and things, our infrastructure was planned for these developments. Um, the other good news is we're essentially virtually built out. A lot of the large pieces of land, you know, you'll have infill developments, but this was really the last big one. Uh, and the infrastructure was planned uh, for this. But the reason most of you 
maybe originally moved here is because of our amazing natural resources and parks and amenities. And this is the area where I have the most fun with my colleagues from around the region because we blow the pants and the doors off of all of our, our, our competition, if you call it that, um, with the number of, of parks and, and amenities we have. So we're 36 square miles, six by six. We have over 570 acres of township parks, 50 plus miles of trails, 42 lakes, that's one of my favorite stats, 36 square miles, more, uh, 42 lakes that are larger than five acres. We have a county park, Orion Oaks, you'd probably take your dogs there. And then we have a state park, Bald Mountain. Uh, and the good news is, is this board, your board, the people that you have elected to represent you, have determined to keep growing that. So while we have um, seen a lot of growth uh, in residential developments and commercial developments, the board has taken a strong focus on continuing to grow our natural resources and amenities. So we have that really cool dragon that was just on the last um, screen that was a dream of ours to create a cool pocket park. We're creating another one at Pasadena and Baldwin. That's what it's going to look like from, from the sky, like a tree. It's more of a passive park, uh, but more green space for our residents uh, to enjoy um, that live along that Baldwin corridor. And then, you know, the big one, I would say, uh, a decade ago, which is hard to believe it's been that long, is um, Camp Agawam. It was a Boy Scouts camp. It's still, oh, it still is a camp because the township purchased it, but um, some of those greedy developers, I'm not going to name names, uh, were trying to purchase that and turn it into a neighborhood, and the township stepped in and purchased that 143 acres um, to save forever, um, which hopefully many of you have been able to enjoy. So we are working on listening to you. That's the, the other most important part of our job is um, understanding the importance of giving great service, but also listening. Hopefully that's another key to your businesses uh, if you're successful. Um, on the screen you'll see um, some snapshot things that our residents have been asking for from our most recently completed Parks and Rec Master Plan update. And the cool news about this is, believe it or not, government actually does work sometimes. We completed 94% of the requests from our residents uh, in that last Master Plan five years ago, which you think we should hit 100, but for a community to hit more than 20% is actually above average. Because this is where you dream, this is where you put the lofty goals out there. We completed 94% of that. Congrats to Aaron Watley, his, his great team. Yes. And one of the questions, and you may have heard this, I'm going to address a rumor some of you may have heard in the room. One of the questions we asked folks is, would you have interest in supporting a sports facility? That's one of the things we've been, at, we've been hearing over and over and over. And 77% of the people that took that survey said they have, would support or have interest in an indoor facility for walking in the winter and pickleball and uh, meeting spaces and things like that. Well, the good news, unless, unless you're a longtime member of the Great Lakes Athletic Club, um, the township, you may have read recently in our favorite newspaper, The Review, uh, that we're interested in working to potentially acquire Great Lakes Athletic Club. And that's true, it's not a rumor. Um, we have a really unique opportunity, I would call this another Agawam moment, uh, where we can step up and for pennies on the dollar, they are in receivership, so uh, they are great people, stand-up business people, long-time community supporters, uh, but the bank has called their note and they have chosen to go the way of receivership, so if you're a long-time member, you love GLAC, they are closing, they will close, and it will be something else. So we are hopeful it will be a community center. So we made a presentation to our board a few weeks ago. Our board is fully in support of this process uh, and hopefully we'll find out within the next month or so if we are successful in the acquisition of Great Lakes Athletic Club. So um, I put one of my a favorite quote here uh, that I like to have. Um, I have this on my desk. Opportunities are like sunrises. If you wait too long, you'll miss them. And the amazing thing about this opportunity is we could potentially do this. We can do this um, without raising taxes without asking for a special millage, without doing a special assessment. Um, we have an amazing business model. Um, Aaron and, and his team and our team have been working diligently around the clock to, to present this to our board and ultimately now to the community. So it's an amazing opportunity and we're hopeful we're successful. And if we are, maybe we will be meeting there sometime in the near future. And then I wanna just close with sharing a few um, other things um, that I'm excited about. We launched the Orion Community Foundation it's a 501c3. Many communities that are well established and um, typically larger than us ha have these. And what this is is a tool for us to do good in our community. You can see some of the things that we're going to do on the screen. We have a five member board. Um, it's independent of the township. This is a brand new organization. 
Our mission is to enhance the quality of life of the Orient community by serving as a community endowment builder, community grant maker, and community leader in support of these four things, community events, community partnerships, community scholarships, and community improvements. So you will see our work soon. Um, if you're interested in learning more, I have information I can share with you. If you're looking to make maybe a year-end uh, tax-free contribution, I'd love to talk to you about that as well. But more to come on this, but I just wanted to just announce this officially today. And then, have you seen our magazine? Yes, it's award-winning. We won two national awards um, through Hermes, which is a creative awards. Um, we won the overall publication and overall design, and I'm super proud of this because this was a dream of mine when I first campaigned in 2012 to try to bring all these organizations together and do one team thing together. And uh, we've done it, and we've done it with excellence. And then last but not least, our team was in D.C. I'm sorry, no, in North Carolina. You guys were in North, South Carolina. Um, so we're trying to level up. How can we set ourselves apart from Auburn Hills and Rochester Hills and Oxford? And we are putting a huge focus on making our community more green. In spite of all the great developments that are happening, um, we're, we're doing things. And we won all these awards that you can see on our screen last week at this national conference. And you can see our amazing team represented us. Our treasurer, Urbanowski, um, trustee Dalrymple, and then chief of staff, Sam Timko, and Jenny Boddy, our communication specialist. But we are on a roll, and we're doing great things. And I said last but not least, yes, yes, thank you. And I said last but not least, but but there's, there's two slides I, I, I added, I forgot I added because I added them last night, but now I remember because I switched my page. Um, I'm tired, everybody. The uh, other thing that makes our, helps us protect your investment uh, makes every community, uh, something that's important to every community. Anybody want to guess? There's a clue on your board here. Safety, safety. And if you did watch my State of the Township address, you probably saw this, but we are, um, we dropped one spot. We raised four spots in the rankings of, we went to 23 overall safest community in the state of Michigan. By the way, there's over 1,200 communities in Michigan. Um, we were the safest community for five years in a row for a community larger than 25,000. One of our neighbors nudged us out for that. So we're the safest community in the state uh, for communities our size. And that's remarkable because it's important to have all these great parks and amenities and investment happening and great customer service, but if people don't feel safe, uh, you lose that value instantly in their investment. And we could not be more proud of our partners. Uh, we're going to hear from Under Sheriff Curtis Childs, who's a great friend and partner of our community. I talked to Sheriff Bouchard last night and this morning again. Uh, he's a great partner. And then our very own Lieutenant Ophier. By the way, that's a picture. He painted that painting, and he loves this picture because he's very artsy. But if you've been around for a while, uh, he told me if I ever show that picture, he's going to quit. Um, so we might be looking for a new lieutenant. But... Uh, we're grateful for our partners in law enforcement. And then this is the last one. We, we, we like to compare ourselves. I love metrics. So it sounds like, wow, we're spending all this money. We're doing all these things. It's how much is our, and I heard this last night from a resident on the phone, our taxes are so, so high. This is a real, this is audited data um, that we all submit to the state. Every community has to. And that's our, our cost to run our government per capita, so per resident, and comparing ourselves to some neighbors. Now, it's not super fair, I'll be honest, with the cities because they provide more services. But if you look, uh, we are providing a great bang for our buck, for your buck. So with that, um, I'm super excited to be uh, a part of a community where living is a vacation and uh, grateful to be um, the supervisor. But also, like I, want, I started, I want to say the credit really goes to the amazing team that I get to surround myself with. And thank you for your time and for your commitment to our community. And I look forward to chatting with you all soon but I'm gonna to drive to Harbor Springs right now. Thank you, Supervisor Barnett. That was awesome. Uh, with so many great things happening in this community. He did mention the Orion Living Magazine. We have some in the back, so please be sure to pick up a copy. And also, congratulations on the American in Bloom, uh, all the awards you got. That's just amazing. Really makes our community um, step, set us, um, be at the top of the list for everything. And we're so excited. Next up, um, I want to introduce Michigan United Credit Union. They are our 
title sponsor today, and we have with us Vice President of Marketing, Marketing Jim Baylor. Um, and his hardworking staff are all here with us today. Jim has a kind of a new baby, so I hope that's going well for you. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's, uh, he'll be six months next week. So. Great. Well, and he, he actually let me sleep through the night last night, too, So because I told him I have two big speeches i got to do today. I can't get up in the middle of the night and feed you. you gotta, you got to take one for the team. So he did. So I appreciate that. Um, so, you know, I... Every time I have to I do a speech in front of a group like this, I always am reminded of some wise words my brother gave me when I was preparing for a best man speech, which is make it short and sweet because everybody wants to eat and drink. So with that, and since I'm right in front of lunch, I'm going to make this short and sweet. So um, as Joyce said, I am Jim Baylor, VP of Marketing at Michigan United Credit Union. I've been with the credit union for the last 13 years. Um, I'd like to take this moment to uh, introduce the team that's here. We've got Elisa Williams, she's our EVP of Operations. Rebecca Gilroy is our Marketing Specialist. Uh, Jennifer Kanger, which some of you do know, she is our Business Development Rep. Uh, Justin Fisher, he is our Marketing Assistant. Tony Carson is our Branch Manager in our Lake Orion office. And then last but not least, Kathy Smith is our Member Experience Officer, and then graciously joining us as one of our Board of Directors, Steve Taylor in the back there. So, uh, community is very important to Michigan United Credit Union. The, the word community is in our vision statement, which is to enrich our members' financial lives in the community we serve as we move forward together. Community engagement is also one of our core values. We encourage our employees to be active in our communities that we serve by participating in events in the Village of Lake Orion and the Orion area. It is an honor to stand amongst so many of you here today representing your business and showing your commitment to the Orion community. This recognition goes out to all of, all of those who go above and beyond our community and we just want to thank you for making Orion Township and the Orion Village better every day and giving to the city all that you do. The partnership between Orion Township, the Village of Lake Orion, Orion Area Chamber, the Lake Orion DDA, Orion Parks and Rec play a huge role in connecting us all together to this community. So we appreciate your efforts that strengthen each of us as individuals and our business relationships. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Jim, and thank you, Michigan United Credit Union, for um, sponsoring this event, as well as all of our sponsors. We couldn't do it without you, so we're very grateful. Next up, we have our Village of Lake Orion Council President, Jerry Narsh. Many of you know Jerry after a long career, 38 years, as Orion Township Police Chief um, that he served at serving as the Holly Police Chief since 2019, but many of you know him. He's been around in this community and is loved by everyone. So he was elected council, like I said, in November 2022, and he has a lot to share today. So with that, Jerry, please come up. You're going to learn a lot, so hold on to your seats. Shall I give you the PowerPoint? No. I'm sure, why not? Okay. Just for fun. Just yeah. Oh, wait. This, is, this happens to me all the time. There we go. Um, so, you know, I did want to, and thank you, Joyce, and thank you for the Orient Area Chamber for inviting us to come in and, you know, get the politicians in to talk about their stuff. But it's a great opportunity to brag about our communities and talk about those things that, uh, that we have. So we, we appreciate you, the Chamber. And you know what? I'm home here. Um, I can't remember how many years I was a part of the chamber team. Uh, Kim, three? She held up a three? It was, that, it was that the middle finger? Oh, I saw one. <laughs> no, three. Wait, everybody loves me, remember? Don't do that. Um, but uh, it, it was probably some of the best part of my career. I enjoyed uh, 38 years of the police department. Last, here in Lake Orion, last 19 years as chief, I was retired for one day. It was a Sunday. And on Monday... That would have been uh, December 9th, 2019. On Monday, I started as the police chief in Holly, which, by the way, the police chief in Holly wasn't recognized earlier as being, so is he here? Oh, yeah, right here. Um, 
So, but on that same day, I also got appointed because there was a vacancy to a council position in Lake Orion. And so it's been like 200 miles an hour ever since. But I didn't move to Holly. Uh, that's a job. This was my career. Um, and it's a great job there. It's wonderful people, uh, great community, great town. But this is home. And uh, with that, um, I am really excited to brag up my home, my hometown. Um, so today, I, I have my own version of a PowerPoint. My wife calls me a dork, and so this is why. So I don't have a PowerPoint here, so what I'm going to do, I kind of wanted to do old school. I just wanted to talk to you and bring some visuals that you can keep walking up on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to PowerPoint <laughs> to things as I'm talking about them. So I'm going to point with power, and that's my version of a PowerPoint today. So um, it's going to work, really, but I don't need the remote. Sometimes I do freeze up, so if you see the arm. Uh, but I'm pleased to, pleased to share incredible news, great news about the village of Lake Orion. The many outstanding blessings and highlights unfolding in the village. And I know as you see these things, I know you've seen them in the, in the newspapers. If you dare watch our council meetings, we've talked about them. Um, but I want to recognize, first of all, the team that's kind of bringing this to bear. And that's our village staff. We have our village manager here today. And, uh, Darwin, and he's put together and assembled uh, a, a fantastic team who make sure that we are um, streamlining public services, increasing efficiency, and reducing waste. And they work closely with all the members of our team, our police department, um, who, you know, I got to brag them up a little bit, right? I always referred to them as my daughter. So it was like, this is, this is my nine-year-old daughter. I never had a daughter. So I figured if I was going to love something really much, it would be if I have a daughter. So. That's my daughter. She's now, what, 20. <laughs> but the Lake Orion Police Department does a great job providing that security. And Chris said it a little bit ago. Um, it's great to have uh, Under Sheriff Shields here today. Safety is the most important thing in my world, and I think in any community, because nobody is going to want to live, work, or play where they don't feel safe. And, and that's the word, and that's the truth. We're seeing that all around the country, aren't we? I mean, people are fleeing. And, you know, so Lake Orion, Orion Township, we've got our doors open. Come. Come see us, we're safe. It's a great place to be. So I'm proud of our police department who in the village holds that down. I can't remember the last time we had an armed robbery because there's a presence everywhere. Um, and our kids and cops youth programs that we developed uh, as a team concept many years ago, um, it's award winning. We've received funds from the Justice Department. I flew some officers down to DC, um, I think it was in 2016. Um, and uh, received a $20,000 grant because of our program. It's a very new program working with kids, and we, that program is still ongoing. So we have a safe community, and there's a lot of reasons why. Um, our DPW team, who keeps snow off our streets, I, you know, I, I always joke to communities, they'll say, ah, and some of my officers, I'll go up to Holly. And yeah, some people are going, yeah, they kind of do. But I wake up in the middle of the night, it'll be snowing, and I get up, and it's like, you know what? I don't have any snow on my roads. So those guys get out at 3 in the morning, and they keep the roads safe, and they get it cleaned up. Um, but we have a tremendous team, and I like to uh, praise our staff. But I want to talk first about some community treasures and infrastructure. So if you're not really familiar, um, the village is a part of the township. We're kind of up in the, in the northern part of it. Um, we are two separate communities, but one team, one family, one town, really. And, but in that aspect, we have our own infrastructure, our own staff, and our own vision, and the things that we're building. There's kind of a different vibe. And there's uh, the village people, right? Proud to be a village person. That's okay. I'm not which, sure which one I am. But with that, we also have the lake. And a, a good portion of that lake, we're kind of entrusted with its care. Um, certainly with the name Lake Orion, that lake is very important to us. It's uh, an all-sports lake. It's one of the busiest lakes in Oakland County. I think it's the third busiest lake in Oakland County. But guess what? DNR, the, the most recent study from the DNR shows that our water quality uh, is phenomenal, and our fish are safe, um, and they're doing exceptionally well. That's very rare for a lake that's busy as ours. Now, we, we do have, you know, our lake is fed in several ways, and then through the dam, uh, we're the beginning of the Pink Creek and then off to the Clinton River watershed. But, uh, and that process will I, you know, filter some water. But I guess kudos to really everybody that lives. Does anybody live on the lake that's here? 
If you live in the village on the lake, okay. Kudos to everybody who lives on the lake. They're doing their best to make sure, and most lake people are very possessive and proprietary over that. So you guys are doing a great job. Water system replacement. Um, I think, we didn't we have wooden water pipes in some of the pieces? I mean, we're, we're, in, the, we're in the process of a four-phase um, water system replacement where our pressure was poor, there were other issues. Um, we actually have water pipes that go under the lake and go out to our islands. We have occupied islands that we have to provide utilities and services to. Um, but we're on phase two of phase four. And when we're done, um, we're going to have a water infrastructure system that will increase pressure, reduce waste, and really provide reliability for the next 50 years. So a lot of these infrastructures that I'm talking about, we're all doing them kind of at the same time. Um, and our vision is to pass off that village baton in a, in a tremendous way to future communities and future residents. Um, our sewer uh, lift station replacement, you may have heard that. Those are those pumps with the green uh, metal thing and they're around the lake. So all around the lake we have, I think was it 19? Uh, pardon? 16. 16. I just turned it. Oh, okay, 16. I had it backwards in my head. Um, I got in law enforcement because I can't do math. Um, sewer lift stations. So throughout the efforts of Mr. McCleary and others um, working with our Congresswoman Lisa McLean. Uh, we have been selected to receive a 5.2 million grant uh, from her office to replace our aging 1970s era sewer lift stations. Now, why are those important? They're all around the lake and it's in the low spots and you've got to pump that waste up to the sewer system and if those things fail, then that goes into our resources, our natural resources, our lake, and we're not gonna let that happen. So um, it's a very expensive program that's an 80% funding and uh, through some really good efforts of people making sure that's going to happen. Our village parks. Um, our, our parks obviously are smaller in comparison to our town, but we're not just investing in infrastructure, commercial and residential. We're doing everything we can to enhance the quality of life, the walkability of our downtown, the bikeability, and the uh, enjoyment of our parks. So if you've noticed, um, just recently Greens Park has had a uh, downtown and how many parks, first off, how many downtown business districts are off of the main drag? So we're blessed in that, right? And then how many downtown business districts have a park in the middle of them in the business district? We're blessed with that. You can come downtown and go shopping. You can take the kids over. And how many parks and downtown business districts have a creek run through the middle of them? Um, it, it, it's just the, uh, the most amazing environment. And with that, T-Mobile thought uh, the same thing, and they blessed us with a $50,000 grant uh, to replace the um, uh, child play structures in that park. In addition, the DDA has stepped forward uh, in the last year, year and a half, and paid $78,000 for all new playground equipment uh, in Children's Park as well as Greens Park. The other was a Greens Park. And on deck is Atwater Park. Atwater Park needs a new... Um, basketball surface uh, court uh, service everything looks pretty good and I, I was on imagine that on social media in the orange chat room that's where I saw this so I just happened to be in there one night after being tagged on like nine different things right so you gotta kind of stroll through so I happened to be in there and I see where some guy says you know what you guys really got to fix that water park your basketball court is so bad that everybody breaks their ankles and it's just but it's become a challenge to play basketball without breaking your ankle and I thought, I gotta go take a look at this and it's pretty, don't play basketball there right now really, it's bad. You break your ankle. Um, so that's on deck, we're gonna fix that. Um, we have placed public boat docks. Um, and now, this is gonna sound odd, but it, so there was a time where we were uh, without a village manager between village managers, so I was asked to be interim village manager. So during that time I thought, you know, I gotta do something. I'm the village manager, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? So I was also serving as the police chief, so I came in and I thought, well, there was this one project. There were people on a lake that really wanted to put lake docks to connect that tissue between lakefront homeowners and the village. So I thought, well, there's something I can do. So we pushed that forward, we put in uh, docks in the Pelton Point area, which is across the M24 kind of uh, South Broadway intersection, so we have docks there. Now we have public boat docks in Greens Park. And the cool thing is you are able to come off the lake. If you live on the lake, if you're out on the water, you drop your boat in, you want to come downtown, there are public docks where you can park. Uh, there's no charge to use those docks. Well, there is, you've got to buy a pass. So you buy that pass, um, and passes are available today, and they are unlimited. Where? 
21 East Church Street. So come see the village. You can get those passes. Can you get them online? Not at this point, but it sounds like we're going to. Okay. So you can get those passes, put them on your boat. It's a seasonal pass, um, and then you can park at those docks and shop downtown. So in the process, they were about to do redo M24. So we dialed up MDOT and said, hey, we want you guys to pay for a mid-block crossing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a state trunk line, state highway. So we really think this is important, and they did. They stepped up, they designed it, they paid for it. So that's where you have that mid-block crossing. It's where you get off the boats and you're going to come downtown. Um, you can cross over the first two southbound lanes, and you've got lights that will flash for you. You can button that. Those are there for, that was to facilitate the boaters to come in and safely get downtown. <laughs> And, you know, I'm a cop, so I can say this rationally, more importantly, after they leave from being downtown to get back to their boats. You know, don't just water into the roadway after a few pops downtown. Nobody caught that. Um, so the village uh, is in development stages of finally having a viable capital improvement plan. So we're putting together a very aggressive, uh, 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 aggressive um, five-year capital improvement plan to look at our streets, our sidewalks. It hasn't been done in a very long time. When I got on council and, and talking to other council members there, it was like, you know what, let's, we, we've got to take on, while we've got this time, the mo every difficult, pro what are the worst things out there that we can take on um, and get on the chat room, <laughs> right? But, you know, people are always going to support or not support you, but we wanted to take on those difficult issues, and we're doing that as well with uh, just about every major infrastructure issue we've got to develop in the village. Um, we're taking that on and applying, uh, I think, every bit of insight and expertise that we can do to get these things resolved for our community. Um, and uh, so with that, uh, downtown parking would be another one. But I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, who here remembers maybe five, six, seven years ago where the biggest issue on the chat room when it came to the village or it came to the downtown district was parking. Does anybody remember that? Social media, uh, Scott was a part of the team. First hand up too, thank you sir. Um, that was the biggest, that was the gorilla in the room, right? I remember we looked at doing a parking deck and it was like $6.3 million to build a parking deck. It was over $50,000 per car, per parking space. And I get it if that's a competitive bid for that. And it was going to be downtown somewhere we would, you know, strategically put that in. But that was a lot, and it was only maybe 74 cars. And that was a lot of money, and that was, what, six, seven years ago. Um, but social media lit up. Everybody loved that idea. There were over 600 comments on there, and I think two were against it, and everybody liked it. Um, but we're going to talk about that in a minute, so we got there. But now I want to talk about residential and commercial development. And I, you know, I, I came up to the Lake Orion area. I grew up in Waterford. Went to school with Kurt Gibson, you know that guy, right? So went to Waterford in the 70s after graduation. I moved up to this area and I've been here ever since. Fell in love with the Orion Oxford area. Um, but it was a different town then. It was incredible. I got in the police department in like late 81, early 82. So since that time, I've kind of got the feel uh, and the pulse feel of our downtown and at that time, you, you know, and nothing against these businesses, but pretty much everything downtown was children's resale shops. Um, we had a lot of um, uh, haircut uh, locations, very, very little bit of retail. Uh, we had the bakery down there. We had some other things, um, 11 teen bars. And, and that was it. And that was it. And our streets were kind of poor. Our sidewalks were crumbly. The facades were circa 1950. And that was our downtown, and it was some place you kind of ended up. Nobody set out to go there. So this year, we have in excess, just north of $100 million in development underway right now in the village of Lake Orion. I mean, I'm going to say that again. We've got up to $100 million of investment in commercial and residential investment in, downtown, in, in the village and in downtown Lake Orion. Now, Chris said it earlier, um, I'm a big proponent of it. I've been arguing this for years, even when I was a police chief, I'd just almost get myself in trouble. But I'm a big believer in private property rights. And I believe if those properties are out there and somebody comes in and they meet the master plan, and this is why it's really important that the public participate in the master plan so they get your input, but if they meet the master plan, if they meet the zoning, and why did they come? 
They came because something's going right. And so if they come and they want to develop and come to your town, we're going to support them and uh, we're going to receive that blessing. And, and that's what this is. So every dynamic community changes. And there was a time, and remember this, please. Now, I got an 1877 house. I live in the down, near the downtown district in Lake Orion. Um, but I tell everybody, you know, there was a time, with, you know, because you see it in the social media, right? Well, oh, there's a development coming. I don't like that because you're going to tear down the cabins. Or, or you're going to tear, there was a house there, and it was Charlie's house. I remember Charlie back in the 50s. There was a time where when your house was built, the neighbors threw a fit, right? Because you blocked their view. There was a, you know, who wants to go back to what era in Lake Orion? I love that. So I'll go in the chat room, and I, sometimes if I can't sleep, this is what puts me to sleep. So I'll get in there, and I'll look at that, and they'll say, you know, people will be bashing one of the developments, and they'll say, you know, I remember in the 50s, we had, well, what era do you want to go to? Well, guess what else was in the 50s? You know, there was two lanes of M24. Um, there, there was a lot of things you can go back to. And everybody's got those, pick those eras. I kind of love the idea that we are a growing, developing, like every other community in America. And people are coming to us. Why? Because good things are happening. So $100 million in development that is redeveloping areas that have been blighted. And we're going to talk about a little bit of those tonight, or today. So we, when we can remove blighted areas, provide high quality, incredibly high quality, beautiful uh, housing and commercial properties and establish a new visible image to our community that raises residential property values while improving quality of life, that's the right thing to do when we all win. Our master plan challenge was to provide additional housing. And in a village with no large uh, undeveloped areas, um, that, that creates a massive challenge. We actually, a while back, increased a four-story district uh, in our downtown district, and Mr. Schmidt put in uh, the residential unit with Bitter Toms, and that's downtown. Beautiful building, and uh, serves the needs of being able to do stacked housing. Um, these developments meet that challenge. Everything you're seeing here today meets that master plan, meets that vision, and I'm going to talk about some of the cool things that some of these developers have done by coming into the village to make it fit in a community that had some questions. I want to start out with the Mashiri family who's here today. I had the privilege of sitting at the table with them, uh, Dominic and Dominic, and, and I'm getting to know these gentlemen, and they are just amazing. I asked them, I said, how many projects have you guys going, going on at any one time? And the reason for this is because they build incredible, beautiful developments. And so, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty busy guys. Uh, look at them. They're not blurry right now, so they're probably going to rush out of here. But I've got these over here in my PowerPoint presentation. Um, so not only can we talk about that, but I want you to come up and take a look afterwards. Where I can't leave it on the screen, I can leave it on the wall. Um, the first one, they've got really four developments that they're doing in the village right now. And each one is unique and each one is very, very cool. Um, we'll call them the Missouri Residential Community Developments. They are three very high quality waterfront mixed use multifamily with private docks. Now one of the things we talk about on the lake is keyholing where people will sell dock space and bring other people in so it's hard to accurately know how many boats should be on the lake. So they, the, the Mashiri family has committed that these docks that are going to be attached to these developments are for the use of these, uh, the folks that rent or buy these properties. So um, we won't have those keyholing issues and it's only fair that these folks that are coming to the lake and finally having lakefront residential uh, along the M24 corridor have a dock. Um, one of the first things I noticed when I moved into Lake Orion and came up here in the early 80s is why is there, why is there a doctor's office and an office building on prime lakefront property along M24 and Lake Orion? It just seemed to me the most bizarre use of lakefront property and especially along the M24 corridor. Um, I think the Mashiri family saw that and they're fixing what I thought has been a tremendous error in our design concepts. There is residential three, four, really high quality residential waterfront developments coming. And, and there's a bonus to this. So density is always an issue that a lot of people will discuss in the community and they'll say, well, I'm really concerned about what? Crime, safety, traffic, our infrastructure system. And if you can answer those questions effectively and safely, like Chris had mentioned earlier, that those are designed in. So a lot of this is not only boiled into the village plans, you know, with the five lanes of M24 and the other things, looking at traffic studies, um, but also into the infrastructure as they build these, these, these uh, developments. 
Um, <clears throat> but they listen to public input. So in one of these developments alone, and this is just absolutely blow me away and I so appreciate uh, this gesture, 75%, they reduced 75% of the density of one development only because they had a community meeting with residents and stakeholders and they came in and they were concerned about density. They were still able to have a return on investment um, certainly not what they were originally intending, but that's someone who listens to the community um, and they gave it back. And in addition, there were some arguments that um, we had some historic properties and there's some very cool old historic buildings. So please don't, you know, let me trash everything when it sounds like, oh, I just came in and burned everything down. No. I mean, certain things like the cabins, the, the rustic cabins, if you know where those are at Heights and M24, there was a time for those. And that was like 1930 because that's when people came uh, to the Lake Orion area and rent a cabin and go out and fishing and this was up north to the folks that lived in Detroit or other communities so they would come up and use those cabins. I mean today they're actually like little mini condo apartment buildings and there's a lot of things that went on in there. So to take that development and remove those things out and put in housing but listen to the community, save one of the historic uh, houses, it's a Queen Anne home. Um, certainly you probably have heard that there was some concern about those homes. These guys stepped up, uh, the Mosheri family, and said, you know what, we're going to save that house. We're going to incorporate it into our development. And to me, that's, I, I just got to tell you, that's kudos to a developer that comes in and says, we're going to listen and, and we're going to help um, at their own expense and own cost. So everybody wins. The first is Mystic Cove. And this is a beautiful design landscaping. And it comes with a pocket park. You hear a lot about those now. Uh, small park spaces that either the public can access or the people that uh, buy into those. So Mystic Cove, and you can see them better when you come up here. So this one has both the lakefront uh, and the uh, street side uh, views. These are beautiful designs. They fit our planning zoning requirements. They fit our master plan, even all the way down to materials and looks. And it, so these developments that the, the Mosheri family is building are from M24 on the west side, the lake side from Heights Road all the way to Flint Street, so you can get that image. Not everything, but uh, there's uh, four separate communities being built uh, in there. This one is multifamily. It's 11 units, live, work uh, possibility in some of those units with 36 stacked townhomes. So the 11 units are live, work, and there's 36 stacked uh, uh, townhomes for a total of 47 residential. Constellation Bay is the next one up. It has beautiful architecture, also has a pocket park and landscaping. And if you take a look at these, you can just see how they blend into our history as well uh, in the village and in Lake Orion. Um, it, uh, this is the one that's going to have the Queen Anne home that will be relocated into this development. And it has 52 units in total. Uh, the Starboard is a multifamily 12 unit residential, a former Orion Marine site. Um, and that is uh, 12 units. Uh, the Peninsula, I think that's what's being called, right? The Peninsula? So here again, this is where um, the, the family came in and they listened to the community and there was kind of a dense corner at the Lake Flint Street M24 corner. And you've already got uh, the other development going at the Orion Marina Center. So, but they had that property and it really is a beautiful space to put in some housing. So instead of, this is where a 75% reduction between the marina development and this one, um, they came in and changed it from a PUD to a site plan. I believe it's a condominium. Uh, and they're going to put in six standalone residential houses in that area uh, that fits the opinion and kind of the vision of the community that came to these meetings. So again, um, we all win. And uh, another one that's coming in, I know you've seen this, and you know, I've been very, very vocal about that empty building, our old high school. I mean, how many, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna date you here. Who in this room went to that school? Really? Very cool. There's some like young people, but very cool, yeah. I mean, that was the original high school, and then I think it was an elementary for a while after that. Community Adult Ed, and I, I know I served on the board of the uh, Boys and Girls Club when the Boys, Boys and Girls Club was in there. But that building has sat empty for close to 30 years, maybe longer. And to me, when you, when you watch a piece of our history right away before your eyes, uh, have gang graffiti and uh, broken windows, I mean, it's the whole antithesis of what you want to do to improve property values in your community. 
But it's our high school and it's rotting away. Um, it was like we had this old used car that the village was trying to sell and it sat out by the side of the road and for 30 years, you know, we're hoping somebody picks that up, nobody would. Finally, somebody came along and the West Village Properties, West Group, uh, came along and they're picking that up and they're rehabilitating uh, and creating, a, it's a PUD uh, development, multifamily, 89 unit, high quality apartments and landscaping. Uh, they're gonna bring in geothermal heat and solar with environmental designs throughout the program. Uh, if you look at the Pontiac Strand three Theater, that's some of their work on how they redevelop a historic site or uh, existing buildings. They do tremendous work, beautiful work. Really honored and proud to have that corner, that old jalopy car coming back to life with a fresh paint job. Um, and I think they're gonna do an amazing job and that is, uh, as mentioned, 89 residential units. Um, 141 Elizabeth Street, that's located at 141 Elizabeth Street. Um, that's what I, <laughs> it's after you know, it's lunch, we gotta start doing shots or something. It's after lunch and everybody's dozing off up here. So, um, but it's a beautiful design uh, landscape. It's a residential multifamily development with 16 units. Orion Villas, Villas or Villas? Villas, I like Villas, Villas. It's a multifamily townhouse, high quality housing, um, and it's kind of split between village and township. That's gonna be right in the middle of a roundabout, not in the center, but off to the left. Uh, the Flint Orion uh, Miller intersection and then also, over here, now I, I gotta make this joke, just cause I have to. So, uh, PowerPointing again. So my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, in the center is the cloud retail dispensary. Don't laugh, because I'm a cop talking about a dispensary. First off, it's the law, right? It's Michigan law, and voters approved that. In fact, voters approved it at I think 62% statewide, both on the medical and the adult uh, dispensary. But in the village, I think I'd been on council 20 minutes and this issue came up and it's like, you know what, not just myself, but other members of council said, you know what, let's, they may have voted 62% statewide to say, let's approve um, marijuana dispensaries, but does, do the people in the village want them in their downtown? or in their backyard and where do they want them. So we wanted to get a feel for that. So we went through the referendum process, we had them put that on the ballot, and guess what? 66% of the village voted to have dispensaries. So I say that to say, this is the second dispensary, and it's called the Cloud, and this is where the rustic cabins are presently and are about to not be. It's my happy face. Um, so that's the corner of M24 and Heights. It's a beautiful aesthetic building. They have plenty of parking, maybe too much, but you know, maybe they're not always gonna be a dispensary. So, but the one thing that I think is amazing about this, and I'll say this because I heavily kind of policed those cabins since the 80s. So I'm gonna tell the owners this. It'll take you 10 years before you move the amount of product that already went through that corner. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I think I got officer of the year one year for the number of arrests I made. <laughs> that. So, uh, so anyway, it was just kind of ironic <laughs> that it ended up there. Um, and there was a time those cabins were really cool. I wasn't alive then, but there was a time. Uh, now I want to talk about DDA investment in the village infrastructure and our success. I, I think that's really important. And Debbie Burgess is here. Debbie, where you at? Debbie is the president of our board, the chair. Thank you, Debbie. Molly would be here, our executive director, but Molly's just not feeling well. So she can't be here. And, but I want to say thank you to the DDA, Debbie, Molly, the board, and the staff for the complete reinvention of our downtown. As I mentioned, when I first got here in the 80s, I used to drive down there at night and it was depressing. You could fire a cannon down M24 at 2 o'clock in the morning or at 10 o'clock at night and not hit anything. Now you can't cross it at 2 o'clock in the morning. And a lot of that traffic is making the turn at South Broadway and coming downtown. We've become a destination, and there's a reason for that. There are partnerships that have been formed, and the DDA became a part of our community in 1985. And at that time, our downtown was all but dead. 
Uh, the DDA vision came on board and things began to grow. Who knows what happened in downtown Lake Orion on March 4th, 1996? Uh -huh. He saw me write my notes. No, he didn't. Exactly, straight on. Sagebrush came downtown Lake Orion. March 4th, 1996. Who knows what happened on March 4th, 2004? Worst phone call I ever got. I was in the shower and my wife threw my phone into me. <laughs> she says, you better hurry. <laughs> Town's on fire. <laughs> um, burned down. Odd that they were both in March. Uh, but in 1996, a cornerstone restaurant, a business that had a vision, that wanted to come downtown and make a change. They saw something in Lake Orion. And they came to downtown Lake Orion and became an anchor. And, you know, South Beach started out with a couple of restaurants and a couple of bars, right? I mean, we don't want to be South Beach. We don't want to be Birmingham or Rochester. We want to be the village of Lake Orion, but we want to be a destination point. And we want to attract commercial business. We want to improve residential property values, and we want to increase our housing the way that's being developed as we see today. But that single business changed the way people viewed downtown Lake Orion. Pretty soon there were other businesses. You look at our downtown business district today, and it's literally filmed. Do we have any vacancies at all, Deb, downtown? A couple? Yep. 20? 50? No, please. No. There's two. So if you have a business, you want to come to downtown Lake Ori and hurry up because you know what? We're popping, we're banging, we're growing, and there's very little time to be in the, the uh, very successful area. Um, our downtown district is the envy of communities, part of which, because I mentioned, come on, we got a creek, we got a dam, we got a waterfall. We got a park and all of this off of M24 in a downtown district with really cool uh, commercial, retail, food, and even entertainment. 20 Front Street is uh, a vision that was born in Tennessee, came to the village of Lake Orion because they said, why? It's the place to go. It's the place to go. Who made it the place to go? A lot of people. But I certainly give a lot of credit to the DDA team at that time. And our downtown is the envy of those communities. We are nationally accredited through Main Street, uh, Oakland County, and nationally we have received awards nationally and throughout the state and throughout the county. Um, and most importantly, we have become a destination point for world-class dining, shopping, and entertainment. Now, I had mentioned infrastructure, and I wanted to talk to you about downtown parking. Seven, eight years ago, that was the gorilla in the room. There was no place to park. And everybody was just, oh, you know, you'll go to the mall, you'll get out of your car and you'll walk 900 feet to get in the door of the mall, right? Go down to Auburn Hills, everybody does it. But then you'll come downtown Lake Orion and you really wanna to go to one of the restaurants and it's like, oh, it's 60 feet away. I don't know if I wanna walk that far. So you, you gotta think that in as well. So we're gonna put up signs and let everybody know uh, you know, how far it is from this parking lot, how many calories you're burning to get to your destination point, right? So we're going to proactively uh, jump all over this. But with that, the bad news is we do have a parking problem downtown. But if you represent a downtown, the good news is we have a parking problem downtown. I, to me, is, is stop crying and whining. That's the best news any town can have. And I can think about 90% of the small communities that have downtowns throughout Michigan or the United States would love to have a problem. But there was no effective, easy way to resolve that problem. So during the process of this development down through our M24 corridor, there was a property came open, uh, the Lake Orion Lumberyard. Now, that Lake Orion Lumberyard is about four and a half acres of property on M24 at Atwater, prime gateway area to the downtown community. There is not another parcel like that, I don't think on M24 from Auburn Hills to Oxford, but certainly not in the village of Lake Orion. And there were some developments that were proposed that came in, there were some density issues with those, it's a very busy corner. Um, a lot of people in, in public discussion weren't kind of happy with that. In the middle of that, the DDA began to think. And they started talking to people in the community and they said, you know what, we have this parking problem downtown. That has connective tissue in two different spots through Meeks Park and over the, uh, excuse me, over the wooden bridge uh, into the downtown district. So it backs up to connectivity to the downtown district. Another issue is how many people come to our events downtown in Lake Orion? Whether it's uh, Dragon on the Lake, um, any, any event downtown, the Jubilee, 
uh, flower fair. It's always more and more difficult as time goes on, and I know as the fire chief's still here, um, you know, it's always difficult to have these events in our downtown district. We do it safely, and we, I think, apply all the proper uh, protocols and things that we need to do, but what if we had a different event space? What if we had parking at that event space, and what if that event space was close enough to downtown to solve all those problems? For $5.2 million of other people's money, and I'll talk about that in a second, we're doing it. So, thank you. That was the biggest infrastructure issue we had in this community. Um, that property will give us 137 new parking spaces. It'll connect downtown. There is room in a pavilion to accommodate farmers markets. Some of these other events, we're gonna be able to put them in town. And uh, it's paid for over 17 years on a $5.2 million investment, and the DDA captures funds in our TIF district, and $400,000 of those funds that we capture come from areas outside of the village. That is more than gonna pay for this development for the next 17 years. So in other words, if you live in the village or if you do business in the village, not a dime of money that would normally have left the village is gonna pay for this, it's only the money that would have otherwise left the community. So these are dollars that would not have otherwise stayed. Um, to me, that's absolutely incredible. And in addition, our DDA and the village have been negotiated a 75% tax capture return on all new development after January 1st, 2023. That's unprecedented. Nowhere in the country, nowhere in the state of Michigan has the DDA entered into the agreement that 75% of new captures are gonna come back to that community for infrastructure. We have that in place. Thank you. And finally, one last thing is our Michigan, control, uh, Michigan Liquor Control issues licenses for bars and restaurants. And everybody likes to have great bars and restaurants close to downtown. I like it because I can walk there. I had the DPW paint a really bold line from the downtown district right to my house. I can walk home. I just got to find that line. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But Without these licenses, we would not have another restaurant or bar in the village of Lake Orion. We've been maxed out for 30 years because they issue Class C liquor licenses based on what? Population. So we've been maxed out for years. Under the redevelopment license program with the Michigan Liquor Control Commission, the legislature said we want to jumpstart some of these towns. So they're unlimited, unlimited. The town can determine if it's the right fit on the business. They can purchase them at reasonable prices. All they need to do is do a monetary um, redevelopment with inside the building and they get the license. You take away the DDA, you forever lose those licenses. Not another restaurant bar will come to the village of Lake Orion. The ones that we have are in existence, they can keep recycling, but they cannot turn that over to another business. So a value asset to having a DDA in a downtown district is having those liquor licenses. The state of the village to me is downright amazing. First time in our history, $100 million in residential and commercial development that fits our master plan and for the most part um, is going to vastly improve everything of our community. We thank the village administration and staff. We thank the, the, the folks that are coming into town to invest in the village and in Orion. The volunteers, the boards, the commissions, our residents, the business owners, and our employees. It's another reason people come downtown. We've got the right mix of businesses, but without good employees, who, by the way, many move into the village and live in the Orient area, uh, they bring it every day. And you can see it every time you come downtown. And we pledge to ensure that we follow our vision, our master plan, uh, our zoning, and keep things relevant in the village. We are the heart, the hub, and the heartbeat of the Orient community. And I thank you. Real quick, though, I, I, I've just got to I've just got to say thank you and praise uh, to our under sheriff here. And I originally, you know, Mike Bouchard was originally going to be here, um, and I've been in law enforcement now, you know, 42 plus years, and I, I kind of know how that stuff works. And uh, I want to say that we're proud and honored to have you guys here today, and for building, without question, um, they are one of the biggest. Uh, county sheriff's office association or county sheriff's offices in the country but hands down they are the finest and there's nothing better uh, than what they've assembled in a team in the USA he is uh, a partner um, the sheriff and under chef are partners with all Oakland County police agencies to provide high-tech 
assistance, communications, and crime lab services, and pretty much anything needed, including the uh, helicopter. Um, I call for that every now and then if I really got to get to lunch in Detroit. I see, you know, we got a we got a crime scene going on down there, and you know, they come. No, I'm just kidding. But just about everything, you know, staff and technology, and you are a tremendous partner to every police agency in Oakland County, and you, an amazing job. And, and I'm glad you're here tonight. Please. Thank you. Jerry, so many exciting things going on in the village. I also wanted to give a shout out to Carl Sirowski, who's here, um, the Lake Orion Village Council member. Thank you for all of your hard work. As Jerry mentioned, today we have Curtis Childs, the under sheriff, um, uh, for, in place of Sheriff Bouchard. He got called away on an emergency. Um, but Curtis Childs has been in the office for 31 years and has worked in every division of the sheriff's office. So please join me in welcoming um, Sheriff um, Curtis Childs. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll apologize first for the sheriff not being here. He was called away. Uh, so I'm here in his place. And I'll be brief because as Jim stated earlier, he was standing between you and lunch. I'm standing between you and the rest of your day. So I only have a few things to talk about, and I'll be very short. Um, Lieutenant Ophier, who was here earlier, is in charge of our substation here in Orion, does a fantastic job. Uh, if you notice, he was in a brown uniform. We are switching to black uniforms. So if you see us walking around in brown and black, it's going to be a transition over a number of years because of how many people we have. Uh, but both uniforms do represent us. Um, Upcoming holidays, to ensure that your, the community is safe here in Orion, we will be having extra personnel assigned working uh, to make sure that we are around the shopping areas, roving all around the township. So you'll see some extra deputies floating around. That's to make sure we have enough staff working. Um, you've probably seen in the media that staffing shortages in law enforcement are tremendous, and that is a true statement. We have gotten much better, and I'm happy to inform you that the staffing in Orient Township is full. We have no vacancies. So, um, Chief Narsh mentioned, or village president, sorry, Narsh, mentioned uh, technologies. That's one of the things I want to talk about is uh, the sheriff's office is really getting into drones. So Orion has the second largest drone, trained drone deputies right now just behind Pontiac. We have more staff at Pontiac. So, we do not use them for surveillance. We want to make sure everybody understands the drones. If you see a drone up from the sheriff's office, it's not up surveilling. It went up for a call. It went up for a reason. Uh, we're trying to use those to potentially they can arrive to a scene earlier, give us information. We've had some really good instances. One instance where the drone and the, the operator was actually able to see where a person hit a gun. So when the deputy showed up, they knew exactly where the weapon was. So that's growing in our Sheriff's Office, and there will be more all throughout the community here in Orion and everywhere else in the county. And then uh, the last thing, actually, I want to talk about is our uh, Sheriff's Special Response Team. We have a dive team that consists of, I believe it's 20 other agencies throughout the state. Uh, I believe last year, if you recall, I think it made the media where the swan was rescued by the uh, Sheriff's Office. We saved the swan. I was on the frozen ice. It, that was our uh, sheriff's special response team. Um, so that's growing. We plan on doing, hopefully next summer, having more patrols on Lake Orion to help call, you know, minimize any issues out there. And um, speaking with Lieutenant Ophiaria earlier, we also have some speed carts throughout the township. They don't send tickets automatically. We can't do that in Michigan, but they're out there to help people slow down, show them what their speed is, and get them to slow down. So, like I said, I wanted to be brief. Uh, the sheriff couldn't be here. Wanted to make sure you knew that if you call 911, someone will come. And we would rather you call, we would rather respond to 100 nothings than to miss that one something. So, call us if you need us. Uh, 
Wonderful. Thank you. Sorry to keeping you a little bit late today, but we had so much great information to share with you. Um, we appreciate everything that the Sheriff's Department is doing, all your efforts um, to make sure that um, Orion Township is a safe place to live and play and work. So this concludes our program today. Um, we hope you leave today with new and relevant information that will assist you both personally and professionally. We do have exciting news. We have eight ribbon cuttings scheduled between now and the next, till the end of the year. Every day is taken. So we're super excited. Obviously, there's lots of people that want to come into Orion Township to open business. Today, we have a ribbon cutting at Grit Boot Camp. That actually one is in Oxford. But um, we have lots of new businesses coming thanks to the amazing team that we have here in Orion Township. Um, I just want to mention Save the Date for the Impact Awards, December 7th right here at Paint Creek Country Club. So enjoy your afternoon and please visit our expo tables, sponsor tables in the back. Thank you so much.